I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. At Wednesday's Senate Judiciary Committee hearing, Senator Alex Padilla questioned Biden's ATF director nominee, Stephen Dettelbach. The California Democrat asked the nominee how he would combat the issue of ghost guns. Padilla also spoke about the recent school shooting in Texas, saying, quote, we cannot sit idly by and watch children in America die to gun violence. Here's more from the California Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, like several of the members of the committee, I want to share uh, just a couple of remarks in uh, response to the tragedy from yesterday. But uh, I know our time is limited, so I'll jump to my questions uh, first and end with uh, remarks of what happened in Uvalde yesterday. Uh, Mr. Dettelbach, welcome. Uh, as a U.S. attorney, as I understand, you prosecuted a number of suspects for very violent crimes, including those using guns. Uh, we know President Biden has made it a priority for the administration to disrupt what experts refer to as the iron pipeline. Uh, the pipeline refers to the path by which guns flow from southern states with looser restrictions up Interstate 95 to northern states with stricter gun laws. And by the way, it's not the only region to happen. There's pipelines with similar dynamics in other parts of the country, including out west. But the Iron Pipeline and others like it undermine efforts of many states and major cities to protect their communities who pass laws uh, to help prevent gun violence. Yet a number of states continue to expand access to firearms and loosen their restrictions without justification. And the lack of action at the federal level leaves communities at the mercy of what seems to be a race to the bottom. So, Mr. Dettelbeck, can you uh, briefly describe how the Iron Pipeline increases the prevalence of gun violence in American cities and why a federal response is required? Senator, um, I, in my time as, as a prosecutor, especially as U.S. Attorney, I learned that the, one of the most important tools we have is data. We, we collect data, we follow the data so that we don't let our own predilections interfere with how we deploy resources. And so, uh, I am not pri I'm not privy to all the data, but I know that uh, the president ha and the attorney general have prioritized, based on data, uh, certain uh, regions and areas where we, we have seen an increase in firearms trafficking and established task forces, because that's another tool in addition to data, so that federal law enforcement can, can be a force multiplier for state law enforcement in trying to disrupt Gun, in, uh, illegal gun trafficking. And so I believe that that's an effective approach. I believe that we need to scale it. I'm not in the ATF yet, so I don't know the specific areas where we're seeing no. the trafficking, but I think that's an important approach. Senator. Well, once you're there, you will be privy to the data and you'll see that data justifies my, my statement, President's um, focus on this. Uh, and I pray your response when the time comes. You know, data tells us that it's not the only uh, issue. There's an increasing uh, concern about the prevalence of ghost guns and their impact on public safety. Look, I represent California, and I'm proud of uh, the state's efforts to address gun violence broadly, starting with the governor, legislative leaders, and others. Uh, in addition to the dynamic of the Iron Pipeline, you know, California's laws and restrictions versus other states in the West, uh, ghost guns is increasingly a top priority. And the last year, Senators Blumenthal and Senator Cruz held a subcommittee hearing on this very important topic. Now, ghost, gu ghost guns are weapons built by individuals using components they've purchased online. These guns lack serial numbers, which is typically used to track weapons by law enforcement. So no serial numbers, no data. To your point, and because these guns are usually built at the purchaser's, purchaser's home, there's also no background check that goes along with it, no registration process or even an age limit that is on the books. Clearly, ghost guns have become a problem throughout the country, uh, but in Southern California in particular, violence with the involvement of ghost guns is up significantly. Can you just briefly discuss the ramifications involved if unregulated gun production continues to increase? Uh, Senator, uh, one of the things I've done in, uh, up till now since my nomination is talk to a lot of law enforcement officials. And they have, uh, they have told me that 
uh, ghost guns present them with a, a violent crime problem. Uh, my understanding of, uh, of the regulation that uh, uh, the ATF put out uh, is that it would require serial numbers uh, and background checks for uh, a certain category of individually made firearms. Uh, and, and that would enable uh, people to uh, avoid, not to avoid a background check by, for instance, purchasing one of these buy, build, shoot kits, which is basically a gun that you assemble on your own, but you buy together. And so closing that loophole uh, would enable us to get serial numbers from guns uh, found at crime scenes uh, and would also uh, enable us in certain circumstances to run background checks on individuals uh, to prevent people who everybody agrees should not have a firearm from having one. Okay, thank you. I look forward to uh, following up and working with you on these uh, critical issues. And Mr. Chair, just in closing, uh, I just want to join the chorus of members of uh, this committee and the Senate in sharing my condolences to the families uh, and the communities reeling from recent gun violence across the country, from Buffalo, New York, to Laguna Woods, California, and now Uvalde, Texas, the gun violence in our communities are, that, our exper that our communities are experiencing is simply, simply unacceptable. I've spoken uh, nonstop since yesterday's tragedy, not just as a senator, but Mr. Chair, as you know, as a father of three young school-aged children. This shouldn't have to be the case. And in the last two weeks, we've experienced at least 22 mass shootings across the country. No other developed country has to deal with this, but we do. Now, some folks suggest that uh, arming teachers or providing more armed presence on school campuses will make them safer. If more guns were the answer, the United States would be the safest nation in the world. But it's not the case. When I was growing up, I remember uh, on at least an annual basis, uh, we'd go through these fire drills at school. What to do if there's a fire on campus? I come from California. I grew up in California, so we're also not unfamiliar with earthquake drills. To think that our young people today have to practice active shooter training is a sad statement on our society. When young children aren't, don't feel safe going to school, when people have to wonder whether it's safe to go to a grocery store, or a house of worship, it's a nightmare come true. Uh, I know the jurisdiction over gun safety straddles a few committees. I sit on the Homeland Security Committee, but this is the primary, the Judiciary Committee. And I hope that we can find the will to advance common sense gun safety legislation. Because yes, it is a choice to take action. Inaction is also a choice. I choose to take action. We cannot sit idly by and watch children in America die to gun violence. Thank you, Mr. Chair.